we were at my parents' house and Ryan had on his pink golf shirt and I looked at him and keep in mind, my dad is literally right across from me. So it's me, my dad and Ryan. I said, babe, you look really good in pink. And then he goes, yeah, you look really good with nothing on. I'm like, the fuck? Like, why yeah. would you say that? And I looked like, to the right. I was like, oh, uh, you're like, why, I don't know. Wes. Why did that come out of my mouth? <laughs> You're listening to the Laughing Couple podcast with your hosts Brittany and Ryan Ostafi. Join them weekly as they discuss topics such as relationships, kids, sex, parenting, all unfiltered and all with a healthy dose of laughter. Please welcome your hosts Brittany and Ryan Ostafi. This is why you have headphones. Well, obviously I wouldn't just jump on and not test my audio. We're having a discussion because I no longer want to wear headphones, I think. I don't want to wait. They hurt my face. They hurt my face. Unless we're headphones interviewing. Headphones hurt your face? Yeah, like, they just like squish my face. I just feel like if we're talking to each other in the same room, we don't need headphones. If we're interviewing somebody and they're on the screen, obviously, but we don't need headphones if I, not. I respectfully disagree. I think it's important to hear yourself because you'll know how loud you are. You'll know how far away from the mic you are. Mm. Audio is important. It is. But I just look at the professional podcasts and they're not wearing headphones. <laughs> well, we're not professional. Then. Yes, we are. Anyways, of course we are. Happy day after Father's or two days after. I guess this would go on Tuesday. Happy yes. two days after Father's Day weekend for all those fathers that are out there. For the 18 of you that listen to this podcast, <laughs> I appreciate you. I acknowledge you. You're doing a great job. And if you're not and you're coming to this podcast to be better at what you're doing, then that's, you know, acknowledgeable. The hat is tipping to chip, you, sir. Chip, chip to you, sir. You're doing a bang up job. I don't care what anyone says about you. How was your father's day? My father's day was lovely. I did what all, not all fathers, I did what the fathers that I hang out with want to do on father's day. I got an early morning tea time, played a, uh, well, not a I great say round. I it was early. No, it was early morning. Like you're, when you're done at one, when you're done at noon. Yeah, but 9.30 is not early. When I'm thinking early tea time, I'm thinking like 7 a.m. 7 a.m. the usual morning. I feel like 9.30 up. is perfect. Our tea time was 8.40, by the way. Anyways, oh. we were done by 1 o'clock. When you're finished a, a whole day's activity by 1 o'clock, that's mm. an early start to something. It's a great way to start a day. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I got to be able to do that. And then I, the most important thing for me is to be able to hang out with the kids, which we didn't necessarily hang out with the kids as much as I probably should have. I felt pretty bad at the end of the night when Cooper's like, hey, dad, you promised to do this with me and you didn't do it with me. And I was like, oh, shit. That's on you. That's a, that's a me thing. But <laughs> the opportunity to do what I wanted to do on Father's Day was perfect. I'm so glad. Yeah. So thanks for creating that space. Oh, no problem. You deserve and you got it. Me a, a and you time. got me a beautiful shirt. Yeah. And shampoo and deodorant. Yeah, yeah well, love. those last two are for you. Love. No, they're not. Yeah, you well, use I my deodorant. If I, I was smell like, good, can you use your own If deodorant? I smell good. <laughs> Anywho, um, so speaking of Father's Day, we had a discussion because we've talked about this briefly on the, in, in the past, but men, I feel, well, I think most people would agree with this, don't hang out and talk about their feelings as much as women do, right? It's very easy to be like, hey, do you want to grab a drink and hang out? Or do you want to have a come have a coffee? Uh, there's just this like weird stigma with boys. And it's like, if, if you're hanging out, you're going to be watching sports. You're going to be talking shop, right? Or you're going to get like fucked up. Like those I feel like are the three things that most men, when they're getting together, that's what they talk about or that's what they do. And so you are booking a guy's weekend this coming up weekend for three days. And I know I've already said this to you, but like, I'm so proud of you. I was saying this to uh, Jamie and Whitney, two of the wives of the men that you're going with. And I'm like, I know this sounds so dorky, but I'm so proud of Ryan because we have talked about this multiple times, how men don't, they don't make the effort. They're all like, you're always down to go hang out. But like most men are like that, but they don't want to plan it. Like if someone were to be like, Hey, do you want to go grab a beer? You'd be like, yeah, sure. But like, you don't, you don't plan it. 
right? So I'm just so proud of you. I feel like you're gonna have such a good time. And there's so many men going and everyone was like, so excited because nobody plans anything. So they were like, yeah, I'm in, I'm down. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. There's something that there's something generationally that has changed with our generation and then moving into uh, future generations that like, I look at my dad, I look at your dad, I look at the, I look at the father like, uh, figures in my life, mm-hmm. business wise, people who I, who I look up to who are older, they all have long term friendships, right. but like they have long term yearly, like yearly things that they do. So my dad plays poker with his buddies once a month or once every two months, they go golfing. They have the same golf tournament, same golf weekend, twice a year, beginning of the year and end of the year. I look at your dad, your dad's got like four golf tournaments that he's in every single year with the same group of guys Mm -hmm. in different groups, like same different groups of guys. Right. Um, you just do these things and, and we don't, Right. We do not. And we've talked about this, but I had a great conversation with Adam yesterday mm-hmm. on the golf course. And it was nice to hear somebody else express how I have been feeling with respect to men in my life mm-hmm. and a want, need, or maybe even a desire to have more connection. Right. And it's very difficult. And we kind of, we were having a conversation yesterday about it. And he's like, I don't understand. Why is it the case? And he put up a good point. He's like, I know that if I talk to my average friends, it's not like every one of them is the number one sales guy making $400,000 a year with a 10 inch hammer. Who's good to, (laughs) who's good to last, you know, you know, a hundred hours in bed and can get his wife off all over the place and can bench 400 pounds off his chest. He's like, I know that they, those boxes aren't checked for every guy. And it's almost like if they're not checked, we mm-hmm. don't talk about it. Mm. And then I said, well, you know, the opposite like you, is you don't share your, like I say, you're not doing well, whether that be like never. emotionally, financially, whatever, you don't share that because men have this weird thing about it being like a weakness. Well, there, there's two, there's two problems with men. Mm-hmm. You don't share weaknesses and you don't share strengths. Mm -hmm. If you had a good day, if you had, uh, if you got a, an increase in your salary or you made a huge commission or you sold something or just things are going really well, or you got a new job, you tend not to talk about those things because you don't want to be the guy who's egotistical. You don't want to be the pretentious asshole. Okay. Oh yeah. Here he goes again. You know, check that one off. Must be nice. Must be nice. You don't want to be that guy. And you know, if you are to say those things and you leave, those guys are going to chirp you. Well, I I mean, I wouldn't say like, let's not, yeah, let's not blanket that, but a A lot lot of guys guys do because I've heard it. Like I've, I've heard it from many, like in our last, like however many years we've been hanging out with people, there's definitely a couple of people who always will make those comments, right? Like they're just everywhere and that's on them. Like it's really somebody's opinion of you is none of your business, right? Like that's such a true statement. So I feel like not everyone is like that. Like, let's just be clear, but it's like it's been engraved or embedded in you guys not to share you those don't brag. things. You do not brag. Yeah. But and there's some- a big difference between bragging and just like sharing something. Yeah, but the problem is, is it's all an interpretation of the person listening. And if yeah. the person who's listening to you has a diminished listening of you and or a diminished listening of themselves, your good news comes across as braggadocious. Right. No matter what you no do. No matter what you do, you no matter how you say it. So if things are going really well in your life, you do not talk about it as a man. Yeah. If things are going really bad in your life, you do not talk about it as a man. So what's left? Nothing. Yeah. And so unless you're in the same industry as somebody or unless you have the same hobbies as somebody, there's really very little to talk about as men. So right. you just do things. You said, oh, you know, we just get hammered. Yeah, we do. We watch sports. We get hammered. We laugh. We have very surface level conversations. And I had like one of the coolest conversations in my life with Adam yesterday because yeah. how I'm feeling is how he's feeling. And right. he said, why can't, and this, even saying this is like, wow, it's funny that we said this and it's like, oh, oh, oh. but I'm like, why is it like yeah, this? Like, right. why am I even afraid to say this? But he said to me, well, why can't we be that for each other? Yeah. And I thought, yeah, why, like, why could we not be that for each other? Right. 
And so he, he had proposed a once a month or once every two weeks, sit down. He's like a scotch and talk. Mm -hmm. And we just sit down for a night, have a couple of drinks, have a couple of real conversations about life, uh, and then go our separate ways. Like women have this, and I don't, and I don't want to blame, I don't want to paint this with one brush. Women have this innate ability to talk out their emotions right. to, and I would even say to a certain degree, complain about things that aren't working in their marriage with their partner or whatever. Men don't do that. Yeah. I like, I could tell you, I could be miserable with you. I could, I'm not saying I am. I could be miserable <laughs> with you. I won't tell anyone. Yeah. Because, and I don't know what it is. It's like, I, I want to protect my household. I don't mm-hmm. want, I don't want there to be, uh, information out there mm-hmm. that looks bad on you until I fixed it. And like, that goes back to the whole like closure conversation. Like you need to make sure that you have a group of people, one to two friends, like close friends that you can share. Like maybe if you're being unhappy that have an unbiased opinion that know both of you, because we've talked about this before. If you have a friend that keeps showing up and all they do is complain about their spouse, right? Then they go back home, they make up. The friends are left with no closure of that. They just hate on your spouse because you don't come back to the conversation and say, oh, you know what? This is what happened. We had a discussion. We both took accountability, blah, 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 blah. And so all of these people now have this listening, this diminished listening of your spouse. So I think it's important that you do have some close friends, whoever that may be, maybe it's family, whatever, that you can say, listen, like we're in a funk right now, right? Like this is what's happening, but just be very careful who you complain to about that serious stuff. Like, I think it's okay to complain, but like make sure that it's not every single person in your life. Right. Like that's just not fair. The guy who's the complainer. Right. But anyway, going back to your, your conversation about, um, this, this new conversation of, of things, I think that it, we, we are going into that way as a society, I think very slowly, but it is becoming more acceptable for men to talk about their feelings. Um, and not in it, not be viewed as like weak, which is just bananas. But I understand because it's just so generational. Like your dad, my dad, they didn't do that. Like they literally just got together with their friends and golfed or like you said, play poker. They didn't, they weren't like, Hey man, like I had a really rough year. Like <laughs> that's not working out because their dads didn't do that. You just, you ate it up, you swallowed it up and you weren't supposed to share. So you, you weren't, you, you were, we're designed not, we are literally designed not to share. Yeah. There's the, there's the whole sentence. What's happened. What happens behind closed doors stays behind closed doors. That is men's life. Yeah. Like closed doors doesn't mean your front or back door. It means your feelings. Yeah. Like we shut ourselves out. You can understand what's going on in my life. Mm-hmm. That's it Mm -hmm. because it's our lives together. I don't want the world to know that we haven't, and I'm not saying this is true. I don't want the world to know that we haven't had sex in a month. I don't, (laughs) that's what I said. It's not true. (laughs) It's not true. If I take away the last one, maybe, I don't know. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. joke. I don't want the world to know that. Yeah. Right. Well, we do on this platform, (laughs) but like (laughs) in my my normal life, I don't. And so it's like, you know, if, if someone's in this industry mm-hmm. and I'm in this industry and another guy's in this industry, well, we're not going to talk work, right? We're not going to talk work. And the whole thing for a lot of men and, and particularly myself, I'll speak for myself is what's the intention, right? Like, what is the intention of me telling you this? What am I going to get from me letting you know what's going on in my life? Do you want me to fix it? Do you want an ear to listen? Like you're right. right. But, Set it up. But there's two things, right? Like, am, am I being intentional to that person so that they can do something for me? And they want to hear it as like, what can I do for you? And a lot of the things that you want to say to people that you want to get off your chest, there isn't a reason. You just need to get it off your chest. Mm-hmm. And because we live in this world of fix, men historically have lived in this world of if you give me information, I'm going to fix it. That's the intention. Well, I don't want my next door neighbor buddy to fix my problems. Right. So why would I tell him? And he doesn't want to fix my problems. So why would he listen is kind of the narrative that exists in there. And what I'm saying and what I'm suggesting is maybe it's okay to have someone in your life that you just say, I'm telling you this not to fix it, but I got to get it off my chest because right. the only other person I can talk to you about this is my wife and she's the problem. 
<laughs> or, but also, or like, say, you know how couples sometimes go through like a period of time where like somebody is a stronger, like they can be the rock, like someone's having a hard time. So the other one's like, I'm going to pick up the pieces. It's 80, 20, 20, like it's always shifting. Like say that, cause I know I've, I've felt like this in the last couple months, I've just had some issues that I've been dealing with in every aspect of my life. And I feel like there's just this like negative parade and I'm just like, I'm turning to you. You're my person. So I'm talking about it. I'm venting about it. And it sometimes feels heavy because I'm like, I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of complaining to you all the time. I'm like, this is, I don't want to be in this space anymore. So And not that I'm like, I'm going to choose somebody else to complain to, but it's a lot to put on your spouse. Like if you're constantly just like, right, like it's, it's hard. So to have somebody else in a different perspective to just be like, Hey, listen, like I'm not, I'm not having the greatest time or, or whatever is also important because it's a, it's a, it's a lot for you to take on. If your partner, I'm not saying like specifically for me, but like, if you're going through a really hard time where something is happening at work and every single time your partner comes home and they're just complaining every day, it's, it's heavy. Yeah. And I'll say for men, there's no doubt about it. I'll say for men, I, and I, unfortunately I see this way too frequently. This is going to get a little dark, not dark, but deep and hard uh, for a moment. Then I promise I'll lighten it up. I see way too often on social media, buddies of mine talking about buddies of theirs who took their own lives. Mm. And they're always saying, Hey guys, like enough is enough. Reach I want... Out. I want you to know that this is a safe place for you to have this conversation. If you're struggling with something, reach out to me. I don't want to have this conversation anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to experience my friends deciding to choose to leave this earth because they couldn't deal with this anymore. Like, come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. And you're starting to see so much of it. Because before it was like, I had no idea. Right. But now it's like, okay, this is happening. It's affecting men. Men are choosing a different route to go than to have a communication. Yeah. There's a bunch of people that are saying, come to me, come to me, come to me. And we're still not going. Mm-hmm. I think- we're still not having those conversations. We're still not reaching out to our friends. As much as it's nice to know that there's a safe place to have a conversation. We're still not. Until you have that conversation and feel safe. Yeah. It's not a safe place for you, but you have to be willing to have these conversations. And that's why like there's there's these like evolved men who go on like, you know, retreats, take their shirts off, paint their faces, do an ayahuasca trip, kumbaya, and they're like, you know, the evolved version of what it's possible what's possible to be a man. It's not toxic masculinity, it's like empowered masculinity. Well, that version is cool. But no offense, I don't want to go to Costa Rica, pound my chest and and smoke ayahuasca yet. (laughs) Yet. Uh, What I want is a group of guys that I can have conversations with that may eventually that that may eventually three years down the road say, you know what, guys, we should go to Costa Rica and do some ayahuasca (laughs) together. But it's got to get to that level. There's got to be a there's there's two extremes to it. And there's no talking. And then there's this like massive, massive movement. And for the average Joe, they sit somewhere in the middle. They don't want to say too much and they don't want to go too far on the other side. And it's just like, as I said, it's a safe place. It's great to know that there's a safe place. And this is what I said to Adam yesterday. I said, Adam, in a perfect world, I want you to know that you can come to me for really good news. Mm -hmm. If you come to me to tell me that you got a promotion or you come to tell me that you got a new job or that you closed some big deal, it, that's when I know that you and I are at a different level, right? Because you can come to me for bad stuff. You probably won't, but it's easier to come to me for bad stuff than it is for, for good stuff. The moment you share really good news with me, now I know that our friendship has reached that level, right? I got a message from Tyler Frazier a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. with some great news. Yeah. And I'm like, this, this is, is amazing. This is the friendships that I want. Yeah. I want my friends to know that I'm that guy for them. It's quality. It goes a little bit deeper than the surface and surface friends are, are great too. Like you obviously can't have a deep connection with every single person that you interact with, but the, the deeper, I think the older you get, the more you crave those, those deep level friendships, right? Yes. So happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. We encourage you to reach out. I think too, just as a gentle, like if anything you take from this, like encourage your husband even to just like 
plan like a weekend or a night because I guarantee you most of his friends will jump on that. They just don't really know how to be the one to initiate that. So plan it. You just need like one or two planners. Like I said, there's this, there's this generational gap that exists and we can move off of this conversation. There's this generational gap that exists where for so long men did these things. And for so long, society was like the mom stays at home. The dad does these things outside of the house. And we've moved so far from that, that we're like so far removed from it that we don't even know how to come back. It's almost like we don't know how to play in that space anymore because Mm -hmm. we don't want to be the 1950 version of the men. And we don't want to be the 2023 version of the men. Mm -hmm. It's a weird place. It's like there's an attack on masculinity. We don't know where that attack's coming from. We don't know where we play in that space. But what we do know is that, like I said, behind closed doors, we close ourselves off. It sucks. Moving on really quickly. Do you remember what you said to me yesterday? About the butts? No, no. Now you have to tell that one. No, I mean, when uh, we were at my- sunstroke or something We were at my- house and Ryan had on his pink golf shirt and I looked at him and keep in mind my dad is literally right across from me so it's me my dad and Ryan keep and in mind I wasn't paying attention to her dad at this moment doesn't matter it's three of us I sitting zoned there. out and I said oh man I said babe you look really good in pink and then he goes yeah well you really you look really good with nothing on I'm like the fuck like, why yeah. would you say that and I looked like, to the right I was like oh uh, You're like, why, I don't know what. <laughs> why did that come out of my mouth? <laughs> and then honestly, I, there was like a, oh there, God, was there was like a, like 20, a train of 20 like, minute <laughs> period of time where I don't, I, I lost consciousness. I don't know what was going on. Cooper, Cooper jumps into the bear. He's buck naked, <laughs> right? Cause he's changing. He's about to go in the sprinkler. He's going to go from clothes to, yes. to swimwear. And he says to Nana, he's like, Oh Nana, like, cause Nana can see his penis. Yeah. Right. And he's like, Oh, she's like, oh, okay, well Cooper like, change and yeah, then, then turn private. around like it's private. That's private and so cooper does the typical like tuck right he, well he's sitting down right his legs are already sitting down so he pushes his peen like in between his legs so he's he, like, he does the tuck <laughs> he does the tuck and it's the disappearing penis and if you're listening to this podcast and you look at your husband and say have you ever done this the guy's your husband is unless he's lying to you he's gonna be like yeah of course i've done this so every guy in the history of ever has done the tuck the mm. tuck it's like the, uh, it's the magic trick. For, it's the first level of magic for men. Hey, my penis is gone. Right. Anyways, that is not what came out of What came out now. of my mouth was, yeah, every boy has stuck his penis in his own butt before. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, wait a second. I, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's not wrong. I'm not saying it wrong, but you how I'm saying, saying it, it is wrong. Yeah. In that's the like sense, some, like, in the sense, like, that's not how I meant to say it. Every, every boy has stuck his penis had in his own stroke. butt. You had heat stroke. Okay. Anyways. So also, can we chat with this podcast is all over the place. Can we chat about the weird, creepy thing that happened yesterday that we still don't really know what to make of? Yeah. Like, it oh, was yeah. 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 Leah with so, Riley. So weird. I don't know the answer to this I question. I don't know either. So we. The switch continues. Uh, I went That's have, a reference from Waterboy, which, by the way, if you haven't watched The Waterboy in a long time, Brian I has. highly. I just did. I just did. I spent four days every lunch break watching parts of The Waterboy till it was whole, perfect, and complete. <laughs> that movie, there's not. A, there's not a 30 second part of that movie that doesn't belong in that movie. That movie for a comedy is perfect. Start to finish. Perfect. So weird. Okay. So yesterday I go up to bed first. Okay. And I'm, I'm in the bathroom and then I come back and I'm sitting up. My stomach's not feeling great. So I sleep with white noise. Ryan has recently also come up to bed and he's in the washroom. Okay? I mean, I'm in a different washroom because yes. I thought you were in the washroom. Right. So I have the sound machine on and I'm sitting in bed and I hear a child say, no, we hear Riley. Okay. We hear Riley. But hold on. I had the sound machine on, so I didn't know if it was Riley. I Mm. assumed obviously it was one of our children. Yeah, we have two. But it was odd because it was like, daddy, 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 where are you? Are you upstairs? Are you upstairs? And like everything is so muffled because the sound machine is on and I'm not feeling great to the point where I was like, am I hearing voices in the white noise? Like, you know how sometimes you're like, like you're kind of out of it and you like hear the voices. So I was like, I told Google to shut the fuck up. (laughs) Say, Hey, Google stop. So Google stopped and I'm, and I'm waiting and I'm listening and there's nothing. And I'm like, okay, did I like imagine that? So I texted you. 
and you didn't text me back, which really felt really creepy, but I like went to sleep. And so you told me this morning you heard the same thing. Now I heard it without a sound machine. Yes. So I heard the whole conversation and there was an entire conversation that occurred. Now Cooper was sleeping. Yeah. I didn't know if you were in the bathroom or you were sleeping. All I knew is that I was in the bathroom and I couldn't get out of the bathroom to get rather to shut the hell up. Yeah. But she was talking and extremely you were like, loudly. You heard her walk through in the, the whole hallway. hallway. Yeah. In the hallway. And I'm not talking like muffled noise. Yeah. I'm talking conversation. And I'm like, Riley, Riley, I'm in the bathroom. Riley. Like, yeah. Trying to get Riley to, to stop talking. And the bathroom that, that Ryan is in is literally right by the, the two kids' rooms. Yes. Like it's very close. So anyways, I get out of the washroom. And I now immediately immediately start looking for Riley. Yeah. So I'm like, because where where did she go? Yeah. Her, she stopped talking. Right, so right, right. did she go into Cooper's room? Yeah. Did she go into your room? Where is she? Because yeah. I got to get her back to bed. She wasn't in your room. Well, she wasn't our room. Yeah. She wasn't in our room. She wasn't in Cooper's room. I went back to her room and she's sound asleep. Like, could and I don't she... mean I don't mean like sound asleep, sound asleep, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like she in, was out cold. Out, I woke her up to make sure she was okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, Dad. Dad what are you doing? I'm like, oh, like, oh is my, it possible like, that she could have like sleepwalked and got up for sure? But I just feel like. With our history, I'm definitely leaning towards something else yeah. because it feels weird. Like, first of all, Riley has quite literally never sleepwalked ever. Like, sleepwalked. She, slept, sleepwalked. She has never sleepwalked. She's never sl- slept walked. No, she never walked in her sleep. <laughs> She's never been sleep. She's not a sleepwalker. Yeah, never. Yeah. And so Words I feel like for you to be like Riley, Riley, like she would have come in and been like, "Oh, hey, Dad," like you were fully talking, and for you to quickly get out of the bathroom and no one is there no is super odd. No one. It and, felt so weird. And so that that was weird because Ooh. it was a conversation. Yes. It wasn't a word because two weeks prior. I was, I was upstairs yeah. and we have a gate that we put up just cause the way that our bedroom is situated right when you enter our door is the stairs. So if you're, if it's you're, actually a terrible design, if you've got like sleepy wobbly legs and you're a five-year-old kid or yeah. a nine-year-old kid, it's very easy for you to wobble all the way down the fucking stairs. Right. If you're coming into, so we put room. a gate up right at our stairs, right at the top of our stairs, just for the kids when they do want to come into our bedroom. Mm-hmm. Well, I was laying in bed and I forgot to do it. And I thought to myself, oh, I forgot to put the gate up. And I thought, nah, I'll just leave it. And I'm like, you know what? Mm, The fact that that I'm thinking about it now, I, now I've lived this world before. Right. I've lived this multiverse moment moment before and someone fell down the stairs. I'm going to get up. I'm going to put it on. I put the gate up Yeah. and I heard, thank you. And it was a woman's voice. And I came to you and I said, Brian, I have the, look at my fucking goosebumps right now. Yeah. That is so weird. And I said to you, I'm like, <laughs> Britt, did you just say thank oh, you? that's why and you like, asked me. And you're like, no. And I'm like, okay, no worries. And I'm like, I close the door. I'm like, what? And now I'm now looking around. I'm I now looking not, around. I'm glad you didn't tell me that. So that no, night. again, Riley sleeping, Cooper sleeping. It was thank oh you. My God. I'm like, where on earth is that coming from? Now, here's where I'm starting to get a little bit like, do you remember the movie Signs? Yes. Where um, the, the the guy keep, just keeps swinging, just keeps swinging. The girl gets crushed by the car and she says uh, to her brother, just I keep swinging. I do not remember the movie enough to like know okay. that. I well, just remember the water glasses. There's all of these little connections. The water glasses is, is, is extremely important in this story. Yeah. Right. So the water's all over the place. They right. don't know what the water's for. Turns out that the one thing that the aliens can't deal with is water. And conveniently, as the aliens are about to attack them, they got a house full of water cups. Yeah. And what was the the last thing that the mom said to her husband when she died was tell my brother to just keep swinging. He was a former baseball player. And what happened? The water gets put on him. He's got a baseball bat. And the guy says to him, just keep swinging. Mm-hmm. And he beats the shit out of the aliens. I don't remember that. All of these little things in the movie, you don't, I'm getting goosebumps now. Yeah. All of these little things in the movie, you don't think make sense. And then at the very end, they all Come make together. sense. Yeah. Riley used to have what she would call her castle. We would have to build up the sides of her bed and the bottom, again. the bottom of her bed because she didn't feel safe and she wanted literally a fortress of solitude yes. around her. 
She's now doing it again. I know. And I went into her room the other day and this thing was massive. So high. I know. So high. And I said to her, I'm like, Riley, why are you doing this? She's like, I just feel safe. And I'm like, mm-hmm. from what? Yeah. It's so weird. From what? Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't connect with spirit. We've had some people on our podcast that do connect with spirit. If you are someone listening to this podcast and you connect with spirit, can you tell us what the F is going on? Because it's gone from feelings. It's gone from feelings to language. I'm now hearing it and I don't hear, I don't hear spirits. Mm -hmm. I don't connect with spirits. Right. Like we are like regular muggles. Just, it's just how it is. That's a Harry Potter term. Oh, muggle. Yeah. We Muggle. are just two regular old we muggles. Are. We don't have, we don't dabble from in the Hogwarts. magic. Hogwarts. No, but it's just like, Hogwarts? we don't Hogwarts? have the abilities to like speak with spirit. We're just like, we're just there and it's happening. And we're like, what the fuck is happening? And it's, I don't know, like, again, how, as weird as that was yesterday, I feel, I felt it's not the first eerie. time, by the no, way. No, I felt eerie, but I also didn't feel fear which i which i know makes literally no sense because if i were to tell myself this before we had all this stuff happening i'd be like i would quite literally burn the house down but it's not fear it's just it's it's weird i can't even explain it like the fact that i could go to sleep after says something because if i genuinely felt afraid and like something negative or whatever is in the space i would not have been like well good night (laughs) like do you know what i mean yeah and to be clear if if all of a sudden I am learning, like I, I ate something and now I've got the ability to communicate with, with spirit, I'm happy to, to do that. Cause I think it's probably it. the outside of being able to sing. We talked about this. If I could have a superpower that doesn't help people, like doesn't like solve mm-hmm. problems, like, you know, super strength or flying or mm-hmm. like heat vision or something like that. If I don't have a superhero power, what superhero power would I want? It obviously it's singing. I would mm-hmm. love to be able to right. be like Justin Nizuku, right? Mm-hmm. Like Nizuku. that'd be so, I'd yeah. be so cool if I For could do sure. that. Anyways, it would be to channel a spirit. Yeah, it would be. What a cool, what a blessing that would be to be able to talk to those who have passed. I think it would be both a blessing and a curse because it would be very heavy a lot of the time. And I'm sure that you would carry. Well, just think about Mark, like Oliver Reader. He's absolutely exhausted. Like he has like a three year wait list at this point because he just needed to set boundaries for his own mental health. Like if you're constantly carrying these emotions from loved ones and it's always heavy because they're past, right? Like that would be so heavy. Anyways, um. Yeah. Okay. We have one more thing we want to talk about. Uh, last week when we were talking about no good deeds, no somebody good wrote deeds. in and she wrote something and we were like, this is so, so on point. Us. Like it is, it is us. And I think it's a lot of parents. So basically she's like, if I plan this fun day for my children, say you're going to a theme park, my kids with the universe, something happens and they are the biggest assholes from like start to finish. And obviously this isn't every single time, but I can, I could probably list at least five times where I've planned this amazing adventure day for the kids and they're like ungrateful. They're being rude to each other. And it takes everything in your power not to be like, you know what? Fuck this day. Like we're not doing it because usually you've spent money. And like, I know we've had this conversation before, but that is so true. It's a no good deed, like parent version. Yeah. And I, I'm going to take responsibility for this. And I think as parents, we should probably, I, I personally think we do too much with our kids and do too much for our kids. Agreed. My parents never, I shouldn't say never. They only took us out to restaurants for occasions, like birthdays, anniversaries, celebrations. It wasn't like a, Hey guys, what's there to eat? I don't know. Let's go out to a restaurant. That was never what my parents did. To the point where when we say, you know what, let's go out. Cause we, we honestly, we rarely go out to eat anymore because we don't want to deal with our children in the restaurant. And when we say, Hey, do you want to go out for dinner? They're like, no, No. I'm like, what? Fuck you. What? So my parents, my, my, my parents are wonderful human beings. When we were younger, they got us season passes to Canada's Wonderland, which is an, for those of you who are American and don't live in Southern Ontario, yeah, it's like an amusement park. It'd be like Cedar Point, Point or yeah. whatever other ones you guys have in the U.S. Um, there's a lot of them. It's a it's amusement park. Yeah. And so it, from a cost standpoint, you pay one time fee for a membership and then you've got it for like five months. My mom and dad would take us almost every weekend uh, during the summers 
we weren't allowed to buy anything. Yeah. We weren't allowed to do anything. We were there to ride rides, to enjoy each other's company and to get away from the house. My parents would bring lunch to the car. We'd do our roller coasters. We'd leave for lunch. We'd go to the car. We'd eat the lunch in the car. We'd come back home. That was it. When we go to Wonderland, it's like, we going to drive an hour and a I half know. to Wonderland? How I'm long like, is he going to touch? Like, uh, can we go to just the park area? And then the Cooper's <laughs> like, Dad, I was really good at Wonderland. Can I do this? I'm like, fuck you. Well, Cooper had soccer practice on Saturday. I'm like, sweetheart, that was such a good practice. You did so well. Like, you had great kicks. Can I get something? Can I get something? No. No. And you're right. That is because of us. Because in the past, like, we would be like, you know what? Yeah, like, let's get some bubble gum from the gas station. I have to whip by the dollar store. You can pick one. It's just it's so excessive and we definitely have had multiple conversations as of late to be like we're cutting that shit out because at the time it was just easier we were like okay fine like yeah sure, let's get sure. you know they it have been doesn't good. help them like at all and at then, all and here's the other thing and i, I don't want to like be whatever today this isn't a negative conversation but can we just talk about the cost of living right now? Oh it is astronomically high. The things that you used to be able to say yes to because yeah, it's only it's only a couple bucks here or there. Now it's like, oh my goodness. I took Riley and I had our teeth cleaned. We had we went to the dentist. We had our teeth cleaned. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I had no x-rays, surgery. Nothing. Our bill for two of us was $500. Yeah. $500. Family of four, average family of four, average average income earners, a thousand dollars a year for your teeth cleaning, and that's every nine months. Some families they have to do it every six months. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's wild. Well, so, just think about the. Sorry, go ahead. So you think about like I, we're going to take the kids to the movies. That's what right? I was going to oh, say. Yeah. yeah so yeah. we took the kids to the movies on Friday to see Elements or Elemental. Elemental, yeah. Great movie, by the way. We bought, highly highly recommend that. And it's but, two kids too. Like we bought two adult tickets, two kids. 2D, so not even 3D, and not the fancy not chairs. Not the VIP chairs. And it was $48. We were uncomfortable, <laughs> uncomfortable chairs. $48. Fine. Okay. That's that's pricey. Then we obviously had to get food. So we got each of the kids one of the small little popcorn. It comes with popcorn drink and like a little thing. We, they each got one of those. Then we got one deal that came with a medium popcorn, a drink, and a candy. And then we got a bottle of, a bottle of water. The total? Total including the tickets was a hundred and five dollars a hundred and five dollars to go to the movies and with a like, family of are four are you kidding that is like a, an event pardon like, me oh my god oh i remember going on tuesdays it was cheap nights it was seven dollars to go to the movie as an adult seven dollars well i'm three years older than you i'll trump that four four yeah, bucks. i do remember the four dollar one and i remember dollars. when it jumped to seven i was like oh my god four dollars you could go to the movies for four bucks you could get popcorn and a pop for twelve dollars mm-hmm. and like this this is kind of an extension of this but we also said you know what's so sad i feel like the pandemic has ruined the movies because you and i like we've talked about in past podcasts we, like, we love we the like movies. movies. We like that's what we have in we common. We love the movie. Yeah, it's one of our three things that we like. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> we both love the movies. It is not the same. Like there has been multiple movies that have come out in this past year that prior to COVID, when movies were like, yeah, let's like get something to do, we would have went to the There's theater. There's no for way it. we would not have not gone to Avatar. Or Guardians of the Galaxy. We love those movies. And like Wakanda we forever. saw and Ryan was and he's like, Do you want to go to this? I was like, no. no. Like the idea, I think part of it though is coming to the expensive part. Like now we have to get a babysitter. Then we have to pay for all of the movie tickets and the food, like whether. And so now we just wait till it comes on to Netflix like, or whatever. And they're also available eventually. So you just stay in your home. It's just kind of sad. To go out on a date to watch a movie should sad. not cost you $200. No, like it's insane. It should not cost you $200 to do that. And that, why would you do that to yourself? Yeah. And in this world and in this economy with inflation being the way that it is, People don't have $200 of disposable income to go to the movies. Yeah. Like, hello, movie theaters. I understand your costs are rising too, but a family of four should not have to pay over $100 to go Mm -hmm. see a 2D movie in a regular seat. The water, the smart water, that it was either that or Dasani. And I was like, absolutely not. I don't like Dasani. No offense to Dasani, but it tastes like metal. It wasn't even the big smart water bottles. It was the little one. $5 and 60 cents. Are you joking? I was like, is this an airport? 
Like, you know how they jack prices in the airport? It was insane. I'm like, oh my God, this is so painful. But it just, it kind of makes me sad. Like I've always loved the movies and it's such a, like a nostalgic space that I'm like, ugh, like we want to take the kids to the drive-in. Hopefully that By the that way, the drive-in is the way to go. Yeah. If you're going to do a movie and you've got a drive-in yeah. theater, that is the way to go. It's the most cost-effective way to do it. Mm-hmm. It's an entire night. It's an entire experience. And True. I don't care what they say. They say no outside food, but they know you're bringing they in know. literally the dollar store yeah you're shoving it under the seats they don't come in and like check your van sometimes you drive kids and put them under the seat and just say there's two of you <laughs> i don't think we've ever yeah. done that no you, you shouldn't that's that's called theft. and if you have but, a new baby this was our like this was honestly the best thing we ever did when we just had riley when riley was a baby we would go to the drive-in because riley would sleep when she was like a little little nugget she would just sleep on us yeah. like we'd, we'd take her, her out and she would hold her and we got to see like three movies you get the breastfeed it was bomb so if you have a new baby drive-in theater drive-in theater it's amazing anyways cost of living sucks it really does the have- way of doing this sucks but like here's the big thing and big takeaway if we're gonna do these things our kids should be grateful for yes. it not assholes stop being little assholes that's, that's all. it <laughs> love our kids all right guys Bye. peace out a town I, 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 I,